Hi everyone, Manuela Marchegiani from Eisenberg Skin Care. Welcome to our channel. This is a channel where we talk about the science of skin care from a cosmetic chemist and a manufacturing point of view. And today, we're gonna to talk about everybody's favorite topic. Everybody talks about hyaluronic acid, hyaluronate over and over again. It's such a popular ingredient. It's such uh, something that people talk about a lot and they wanna learn so much about it. So here is a little bit about hyaluronate. First of all, what is hyaluronate? hyaluronate? Hyaluronic acid is a naturally occurring molecule in your hair, skin, and nails. It's also in between your joints. It's called synovial fluid. It is a glycosaminoglycan. It is an energy source. It is a humectant, which means that it is going to draw moisture to it. It's a moisture binder. Hyaluronate is so fascinating. Uh, all, one, because it's already in your skin, right? So this is part of how your skin holds on to moisture, right? It's like the sponge for your skin. And very much like a sponge, you know when you have a dry sponge, it's small. And when you wet the sponge, it grows bigger because it expands. Hyaluronate does the same thing. Hyaluronic acid is a small molecule. Well, there's different size molecules of hyaluronate, but it, it is small, and when water, when it, when it attracts water, moisture, it grows, and it can hold up to 1,000 times its weight in moisture. So it's like a camel in that sense, that it actually has a moisture reserve. So this is all really good stuff. So it takes up space, it fills up like a balloon, it brings moisture to it, it is a lubricant, it is a humectant, it's gonna smooth and plump, it's going to give energy, it helps to nourish. It's also a um, prebiotic, not a probiotic, it's a prebiotic. So it's type of food for the microbiome, which is very good for creating equilibrium on the skin surface and in between the connective tissue. There's a lot of really great things about hyaluronic. Now, how to use hyaluronic acid um, for your skin care. Hyaluronate is basically water soluble or a water kind of ingredient. This is important because that means it doesn't retain. So when you're using it as a skincare ingredient, it is temporary. It's not something that's going to store. It works instantly because it's instantly, it's like filling up a, a glass, filling a glass of water or filling up a swimming pool. The water goes in instantly. You instantly get that wetness. You instantly get that volume. So that's how hyaluronate works, okay? Hyaluronate also comes in different Dalton or molecule sizes. And this allows uh, variance variety in penetration. So the smaller the size the molecule, the deeper it can go in between the skin and the channels, and then it can actually hydrate at different levels. So you want a small molecule and you want a large molecule. The medium-sized molecule, because people say, well, then you want a small, medium, large, right? The medium-sized molecule, there's a lot of controversy about the medium-sized molecules. Um, and so because that's still too much of a gray area, most formulators will just go with a small and large Dalton, not with the medium Dalton, okay? So that's actually going to give you the right hydration in skincare and in formulation. The large one will sit on top of your skin. Think of it like a cover or a lid. And the small one will go in and it will hydrate at a different level. So this is really important because as I was saying, it's temporary. It's only going to moisturize for the day, for the hour, depending on how it's formulated. It will give you an instant result. You will start to see your skin will be moisturized. If you have fine lines and wrinkles, they will plump out perfectly, right away, almost on contact because of that volumizing effect. Also will help balance a bit of the microbiome because it has that uh, prebiotic element to it. So those are all really good things about hyaluronic, but it is not a miracle worker. It doesn't do everything and it does need, it does need support. So it does need a lipid, it does need a fat on top of it. Because it is volatile in the sense that it dries out very quickly, it's a very temporary kind of ingredient, you do need a fat on top of it. So you need a cream, you need an oil, you need something else to help seal it in, right? I always think about the best way to think about this is, I was thinking about grapes, right? If you look at a grape, if you were to peel the skin off of the grape, you have that wet, juicy part inside. But if you leave that alone, that grape dries out really quickly, right? So think about 
that as the glycosaminoglycan. Think about that as the hyaluronate, and it needs a skin around it. It needs a wrapper around it. It needs that oil around it to hold it all together and to keep it hydrating and moisturized. Where hyaluronic acid comes from, it usually comes from uh, roosters, uh, roosters' heads, or, or they call it the, the crow, a comb, the cock's comb, that's what they call it, the rooster's comb. So that is where originally hyaluronic used to be taken from. Then they used to take it from marine life, okay? So they would go in and actually extract it from the animal world. That was decades ago very long time ago, uh, 30 years ago. That's where hyaluronate used to come from. It was an important ingredient. People wanted it, right? So that's where they would go and that's where they would find an abundance of it. But today, and in the last 20, 25 years, we've had biotechnology. So it's actually created in a laboratory. It's biotechnological. It is non-animal based, but it does have the correct isomer, has the correct structure, and they can actually then make larger ones and smaller ones that penetrate nicely into the skin and really formulate well. So when you're putting them into a formula, you could put a little bit, but get a huge uh, payout in your formulation for the hydration, for the moisture binding. So that science of creating that perfect hyaluronate is really exciting because hyaluronate does have a lot of benefits for the skin because it is basically the element that's going to keep your skin hydrated, plump and juicy for a longer period of time. And it does give very quick results and it's very soothing for a lot of skin types, almost every skin type. If you have a bit of inflammation, if you have some redness, uh, dryness, use the hyaluronate, but don't use it alone. Use it with the cream on top because if you just use it alone, what will happen is, you say you're using it for dry skin or irritated skin. You say, well, it feels so good, I put it on and it really takes care of my skin. But if you don't put a cream on top, you will find that your skin actually gets more irritated or drier after the fact, the day later, because once that hyaluronic evaporates, it leaves a deficit because it's also taken moisture with it. So it needs a good companion. So it's a great ingredient, it's naturally occurring, uh, it shows great results, but it's not an island. It needs to have a lipid around it to keep it super friendly for your skin. I hope you enjoyed our conversation on hyaluronic. I look forward to your questions and comments and thank you so much for tuning in.